I think for a lot of us, we come into this program knowing that we want to be managing directors or executive directors or leaders of some kind, but for many of us, we actually haven't done that yet. And so we don't know what the day-to-day -day is. We don't yep. know what that, that life is and what kinds of uh, decisions we're making on a daily basis should we you know, assume one of those roles. And so going on fellowship and being able to actually shadow the person doing this yep. and, uh, you know, and, and really getting a sense firsthand what it is that uh, that lifestyle is and what the, those responsibilities are uh, is really, really valuable. I was able to go to the National Ballet of Canada and I worked with the executive director there and I shadowed him uh, in board meetings and executive committee meetings and um, in season planning meetings and it was such a special opportunity to be able to have access to those types of conversations and decisions that were happening in the field um, in real time. I loved uh, my uh, fellowship, and I, for a lot of reasons, I think that uh, a big one was my mentor, uh, David Schmitz, the executive director of Steppenwolf, which is where I was uh, on my fellowship in Chicago. It was so great to have him as a mentor, uh, which is one of the really important parts of the fellowship is matching a mentor mm -hmm. with, uh, with, uh, with a student. Often I would be like, well, why wouldn't you just make this decision? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, I feel like it's that easy. And he would be like, well, here's why it's hard. And I was like, oh, right. Mm -hmm. You know, and being able to really understand the nuances of what it means to hold that position, to be an executive director or managing director mm -hmm. of a large institution for me was really illuminating. Mm -hmm. I think that the school is very keen on making sure that you are gonna have people in your corner when you go back out into the field. So I think fellowship is one more thing the Yale Rep does for us to make sure that we um, have people looking out for us when we go back out uh, and become uh, real folks in this industry again. Similar to other business schools or management programs, a lot of our classes are case-based. So we will read a case study and show up to class ready to discuss what the problem at hand is in this organization that the case is based on. And you put yourself in the mindset of a managing director often or somebody in a leadership position and kind of just tackle whatever issue is at hand and how we might approach it if we were in their shoes. So then to actually be asked to write a case study is a whole nother mm -hmm. exercise that is so valuable because we go out into the field, we talk to people who are actually dealing with a problem in real time. My case study was about uh, staff culture and staff structures within an organization and how to look at it through um, an equity, diversity, and inclusion lens. Uh, if the organization says that they want to be inclusive, how does that look in terms of a hierarchical staff structure? So this was a topic that I was really excited about. What does shared leadership look like? Collective leadership, you know, consensus leadership. Uh, and so the case study was an opportunity for me to explore that because that was not something that we delved into very deeply in a class. So enhancing your learning through another opportunity, the opportunity to create a case that then goes into the classroom uh, and then future leaders are thinking about and talking about it. Maybe they hadn't thought about it in a certain way and without mm -hmm. writing the case that mm -hmm. wouldn't have happened. Right. So being able to say that these future leaders are starting to ruminate on things that you were really ex you yourself were really excited about and now there's like tons of people who are also thinking about those mm -hmm. things as well that could could possibly be influential in the field in the future is really uh, really exciting i think it's incredibly admirable that uh el drama has in the in recent years uh be so become so committed to equity diversity and inclusion um and i think what's most remarkable about uh about the way they approach it is that it comes from both the top down and the bottom up in that the deans of our program are incredibly focused on it and serve on the equity, diversity, and inclusion action group, but they allow kind of the agenda and the trajectory of that work being done in the school to be driven by the students who are here. As theater managers, it's incredibly important as well because we are in a period of time in our industry where this is top of mind for boards, this is top of mind for staff, for all organizations. They either are thinking about it because they're being forced to, or they have to think, or they're thinking about it because they want to, and they're excited to, and they want to figure out what trainings are possible and what kind of working groups can you have and, and, and what resources are available to start tackling these conversations. That conversation extends into every aspect of our work here. So we have these conversations in the classroom. We talk about it, you know, 
as we're looking at a case study, for example, mm -hmm. and um, thinking about what a leader might be dealing with when it comes to issues like this in the field. And so we, because we're always, always, always talking about it, we have developed like a, a vocabulary and an interest and a desire to help bring these issues into the field once we graduate.